You know, I believe that anyone can make a positive difference in the world, great and small. I see it every day. And you don't have to be a celebrity or billionaire to do it. All you really need is the desire to use your unique gifts, talents, and passions, and then to simply begin. Hi, I'm Linda Mackey, and welcome to The Eloquent Entrepreneur, a place where I have conversations with everyday changemakers just like you. Join us and hear inspiring stories, hard-won wisdom, and discover practical tools to help you accelerate your impact. So whatever you're doing right now, listen in and prepare to be inspired. Today I have a very special guest. Uh, she is an amazing woman who is a leader, she's a businesswoman, she's an innovator. Um, she has created so much support in the community of Victoria, British Columbia, where uh, we both live. Um, so, and she's also a mother of two. And um, she is somebody I met a few years ago and I was immediately drawn to her because of her warmth and her um, just sense of community and just wanting to be of service or to be of help. And so welcome, Jane. Thank, Thank you, you for being on my show. Um, so tell me a bit about yourself, um, about you and your business and what you like to do with your time, that kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm a realtor in Victoria. I came to real estate from teaching. Uh, I moved here in 1999, so I've been here almost two decades now. And um, I got into real estate because I didn't have a great realtor. And I decided, uh -huh. okay, I wanted to see if I could do this job better. And I thought, of course, when anybody's um, going into a new profession, it looks easy from the outside, right? Yeah. And immediately, um, so I'd gone in from government and I have a master's degree in leadership from the University of Victoria. So I knew all these people, but I wasn't established in the community. So um, having come from Toronto where my mom was a politician and really quite central to the community that we lived in, mm -hmm. I was used to knowing everybody and knowing everything about everybody, like a small mm -hmm. town. Yeah. So when I came to, so when I came into real estate, actually I discovered eWomen Network and that was the first networking group that I joined. It was a no brainer for me because of the facilitated introductions. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I got into, I realized that people wanted to do business with me because they knew like and trusted me. And I realized that the work mm -hmm. that I was doing in the community uh, volunteering was helping foster those relationships so I've just really kept up with that mm -hmm. and it's really developed my network yeah and I think you really do set a really good example for the community and I love what you say on your website about how I mean the reason you start you you're the host of a really amazing uh, vlog yourself um, called Vancouver Island time which I was lucky enough to be a guest but I love that kind of that what inspired you to do that was just the sense of community and um, you know being able to know people and know who you're working with and just you know foster that um, sense of community right. which I really like as well yeah and the whole purpose of that show was to really just introduce people in the community to people at large so we could highlight them and see how they're impacting their community as well um, and 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 then highlight the area that they're living in so people who are purchasing or mm -hmm. selling get a testimonial from someone like you uh, who knows their area really well and loves it mm. and can tell them what it's like to live in exactly, Victoria. Yeah. And people love firsthand experience and um, seeing what it's like for real in real time almost. <laughs> yeah, and that was a that was a, <clears throat> like a five year project that sort of came to fruition all of a sudden. So it was kind of on the back burner there. Yeah. Just like my show. <laughs> After 10 years, I'm finally doing it. Um, so you talked a little bit about what inspired you to do your do what you do as a career. Um, I know that you do a lot of other things in the community. So we talked about you Women Network. Um, you were the former executive managing director, and that's how I met you originally and liked you immediately. Um, and then you're also an avid rower and speed skater. 
Tell me a bit about that and how you kind of contribute um, to your community as a mentor and a teacher. So I used to be a phys ed teacher in Toronto and I um, got signed up for speed skating by my husband who thought that it would be a lot of fun for us to do a family activity. So anytime we've done sports with our kids, it's been all of us together. So uh, because I took to the skating quite quickly, they asked me to come out and coach the beginners. So I coach like up to seven year old kids. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I call them my little ducklings when they follow me around the ice. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So with the rowing as well. Uh, mm. I rowed a long time ago in university. And so again, I took it up quickly and got into coaching that as well. So, and I do all the social media for both of those groups. Um, and that's a one way of sort of keeping front of mind and being a connector in the community. Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of work, but it's it's worthwhile because you're you're connecting to your community, but you're also being of service as well. And um, you know, you love your work as a realtor, and you love helping people find homes. So I think you're you're um, inspiring to me, anyways, and I'm sure a lot of other people who are going to be watching, um, you know, of how to not only thrive in your business, but be of service at the same time, yeah. which I think is really key. I think the key actually is just to be authentic. Yes, yeah. And just do, like seriously do what you love doing, and then people will be attracted to you because you're not being fake. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, like I remember when I was taking my course, somebody was talking about, what watch shall I wear? And I'm like, who cares? I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's a big part of why I'm doing this show because it's like been 10 years in the making and I'm like, okay, well, I can't hide behind my camera anymore and I want people to get to know me as authentically as possible, but also I want to highlight, part of my work is highlighting people making a difference. So that's why we're here today, which is really cool. Um, so what do you think your biggest challenges or obstacles are or have been in the past on your current like career path or anything that you do um, in or outside of your business? Uh, the, probably the biggest thing is just there's a lot of rapid change happening. Like there are new apps coming out and sort of beginning to filter out uh, the wheat from the chafe. Is that the right saying? So we're mm. knowing what's actually important to keep doing and what I can stop doing. Yeah, it can be overwhelming. I definitely feel that in my my career as well as a photographer. Yeah, I think sometimes you think, okay, the, I better start doing this, and then you realize that was a waste of time. So I, for me, I've been trying to develop a team, and I realize I'm really more of a mentor than I am a, a team leader. I prefer to facilitate people's uh, development rather than lead them because mm -hmm. I like them to be independent. Yeah, and I think that in some ways can be more helpful to people because I think innately we know what to do, but we just need somebody to guide us in the right direction. So that's great. Um, so what's your favorite part of your day? Uh, right now, I hate getting up early, but I love rowing. Um, so just relaxing on the water and just focusing on one thing without any extraneous um, influence it's really it's my favorite thing so the, but the other thing i love doing honestly i love negotiating mm. so submitting the transaction like putting out the offer and then seeing what i need to do to get it through and mm -hmm. one of a realtor who i did a transaction with yesterday actually said well i know your transactions all go through so i'm not worried yeah, and really, and that comes from understanding what the buyer or seller needs and, mm. and, and uh, meeting those needs and then mm. seeing how the house fits in with yeah. what they're purchasing. Yeah, I quite, I quite like it as well. And it sounds like for you, it's a fun process. So how would you, um, you know, what advice would you give to other business owners to make that business transaction or the sales process? How would you make... How would you advise them on how to make it more, I don't know, easier for them or I don't know. So I'm, <laughs> I know I'm a certified word. bank code trainer, right? Yes. So, so uh, that's sales training. 
So what the best thing, the best piece of advice I can, I can give anybody is just listen mm -hmm. and understand like what their need is versus what their want is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people tell you what they think they want, but mm -hmm. then when, when you go around and you're looking at houses or when they're giving your, you feedback, Mm -hmm. is really take that in and then you can say, okay, well, I see this is important and this is important and this is important. And that's then when, right. you, when you find the house, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I find in my business too. People often don't know what they want. Um, so it's really kind of guiding them to get to know what that is at the heart of it. Like, so it is more of a need and then work around to create the need and the want together. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> well, your use of the Pinterest was a really good tool because mm -hmm. then people pick out the pictures and because then they don't have to articulate it with words, they articulate it with pictures. Yeah. And do you do the same thing with, um, real estate? With, with, with real estate? Yeah, or? we do because we yeah. give them, we give them access to the portal and then yeah. we get them to choose what they like. And then I'm looking for what the consistency is between each home. Right. All right. So when you um, work with your clients, like what do you offer them and what do you, what do you get personally from working with, um, or sorry, what do they get uh, from working with you? Um, so what I do is I, yeah. I, I, it doesn't matter if they're buying or selling, you know, a trailer or a, a million dollar home. The purpose is to give them exemplary service. Mm -hmm. And how we focus on that is to educate them. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is getting their house ready for sale, we'll give mm -hmm. them um, access to a stager who will give them advice. Mm -hmm. And I don't pretend to know what I'm doing regarding staging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other realm. <laughs> yeah. She's the bad cop and I'm the good cop. So I'll tell, like I'll say to them, you know, it's okay to leave a dirty dish out once in a while, like if you have a showing, don't stress about it. That's not going to stop somebody from buying, but you know, don't leave your underwear everywhere. Yeah, sort yeah. Of thing. exactly. <laughs> but what, what they get out of it is I think they understand the process. We mm -hmm. try and keep them informed right from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it allows them to feel like they're in control and they see mm -hmm. all the feedback. So they mm -hmm. know if they want to change their home, what mm -hmm. they can do. Exactly. So, um, back to your uh, community involvement and your support of the community and how you're giving back in the world. Um, when you're doing all these things, do you, like, is there something that comes to mind that when you think about it, like, why is it important for you to be of service? Is it an um, internal thing or is it to do with business or is it something bigger than that? Uh, well, it's certainly not to do with business. Yeah. No. Um, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we were running Women Network, we had uh, a donation every year um, towards a local entrepreneur or a group. And that was very important to me, that we have some sort of focus on giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And it was honestly just the way I was brought up, that mm -hmm. we were to be of service to people and mm -hmm. um, think about the community good. So um, some of the organizations like the Victoria Hospital Foundation, I can thank Mary Lou Newbold who brought me in and she brought me in because she wanted somebody with connections to the community. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm doing is bringing in donations and we just raised a million dollars, which is mm -hmm. fabulous. I know, I heard that's amazing and I was happy to be a part of that as well. Yes, so thank you. you inspired me to be of service more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think also, yeah. you know, like at the end of the day, it's not how much money you made, it's uh, really what impact you've had. And if at the end of my life, when I look back, that's how I wanna, how I want, mm -hmm you know, my, I'm, I want my impact to be positive and I want my kids, um, to be happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if they're a doctor, a lawyer, or a rocket scientist. I want them to be happy people. And yeah, in That's... general, you know, there's, it doesn't take much to just make a little bit of an impact. Exactly. And that's one of my big sayings for my show today is it's no matter how small, so as long as we can make an impact that's positive, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, 
David Suzuki level, you know, impact. It can be just a small thing that somebody can do. Um, maybe it's once, maybe it's on a regular basis. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, you can say, you know, I did this or I made a difference in so-and-so's life or, you know, I raised happy and healthy children, you mm -hmm. know, because that's what we all want, I mm -hmm. think, at the end of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess another question would be, you know, what... Um, what in, is there a story behind, or is it just like you said you, you were just brought up that way? Or was there a story that inspired you to do the things that you do? Um, well, my mom was a community leader. She was a politician mm. in Toronto. And then when I moved here, uh, I lived at Pearson College for 15 years, and I was a house parent. And I saw the, um, the students there and how they really were working to make a positive change mm -hmm. and I think you know they that and the work with um, e-women network and the foundation and everything just realized maybe it's made me a softer person I would say more nurturing I'm less black and white than I used to be that mm -hmm. could be age uh, <laughs> yeah well uh, we want to give as women too yeah the more you give the more kind of maybe soft around the edges we get. We get a little bit more empathetic and compassionate maybe. Yeah, I, you know what's funny, I was very, I was a very competitive teenager and I was told I had to be more cooperative. And then when I was a teacher, I realized that my students, I worked a lot with high school girls and my students just wanted to really belong. And so mm -hmm. everything I worked towards in the class was helping people feel comfortable and belonging to their mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and I realized like some of some of those kids in those classes they don't know the names of the other of the other girls or boys mm -hmm. in the and it you know so when I taught out here I taught summer camps and then I mm -hmm. was a house parent is it was really about building the community and the ties mm -hmm. so that's a very strong theme with you I hear and that you are um, you really enjoy working with young people and helping them nurture their um, sense of self and growth in whatever direction they want to go. Is there, um, was that just something that happened over time or is that, is there a particular incident that kind of, or not incident, but thing that happened that kind of, or is it just a natural progression maybe? Um, I think it's been innate. Like even when I was in high school, I was a social director of our student um, mm -hmm. uh, council. So in grade ten, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which my brother was so embarrassed about. But grade eleven, actually, and you know, I don't know. It's funny when you look back and you realize what's remained strong and consistent mm -hmm. in your life. I think there are two things. One is always bringing people together mm -hmm. and the other is also organizing people. Like when I had babies, um, I was really afraid of being alone because I, I was on the edge of my chosen. Mm -hmm. So what I, I arranged a walking group every week. Mm -hmm. We met on Tuesdays. We got in our, got out our strollers and we walked around around to Fuca Park a couple of times. And mm -hmm. then I ran, um, run walk groups for the Times Colonists for five years. Oh, wow. So Look at all these things that you're doing <laughs> that are coming up due to this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's what attracted me to you in the first place. I mean, I didn't really know you very well, but I could just sense that, you know, you were very supportive and, you know, friendly right off the bat, like the first time we met in Vancouver. And the more I got to know you and seeing, you know, your, your strong value of community and bringing people together and, you know, you are a leader, but you're also, um, like you said, a mentor. And I think that's a lot, in a lot of ways, more valuable to people. So, and I see, you know, working with um, youth and adults, like, because you do a lot of work with e-women still and just supporting your own um, team at, at uh, uh, Briar Hill. Max Camosin, you know, with your whole team. Yeah. So it's um, it's just part of you, who you are, which is amazing, and I think and very inspiring. I think for a lot of people. Um, so, what advice would you give to people that perhaps want to make a difference? Because 
What I want to inspire with this show in particular is that, you know, we can all go to work, come home, eat, and go to bed. <laughs> um, Boring. But what else can we do? And no matter how small, what is there? Is there something that you believe in or something that you feel strongly about? Or somebody? is there somebody you want to help? You know, um, what advice would you give? Because this is something that comes innately to you. Maybe it doesn't come innately to other people. Um, is there something that you would say to inspire them or give advice on, okay, how to, how to get started or, I know people say just do it, but. Um, is Find something... your passion, mm -hmm. right? Like there's a woman who, uh, she, she started giving back, she loves cats. Mm -hmm. So she just started donating to different cat friendly organizations and she's made a big difference. And yeah. I, I don't think it has to be human or animal or whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, you don't get joy at the end of the day by having a lot of money. You get, That's true. You get joy by helping people. Mm -hmm. So I think just finding out what's important to you and contributing that way. You know, mm -hmm. we, what surprised me in our rowing and our speed skating group is how involved we are in each person's lives mm -hmm. and for the guy who has cancer or the guy who has um, an immune disorder mm -hmm. or somebody whose um, husband passes away or their mom mm -hmm. dies you know that we're all there for one another we went to our coach's wedding mm -hmm. so it's really about lifting people up and supporting yeah. them you know, and it doesn't have to be money. Um, the great thing when people say, well, you know, you make a ton of money in real estate. I don't make a ton of money in real estate, but you know what? I can contribute differently than how I would have been if I'd stayed a teacher. Right. So. Yeah. And that brings you more joy because I see you as so happy all the time. So I want what you have. <laughs> I'm on happy juice. <laughs> Um, so do you have an, a favorite inspirational quote or thought that you want to share with, with uh, my audience? Oh, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Margaret Mead uh, has a quote about never underestimate the power that one person can make the change in the world. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, I get to. Yeah. I believe in that wholeheartedly as well. Um, I've got that t-shirt and it's funny because my daughter decided to wear, start wearing it. Oh, the, the Margaret Mead quote? Oh. Yeah, and uh, you know, every time I see a powerful t-shirt, mm. um, I send my kids motivational quotes every, every day, or not every day, but you know, yeah. occasionally. And I also, every time I see a, a, a t-shirt with a good saying that's strong, I give it to my kids. We did a photo shoot not too long ago now and we were kind of in the works for quite a while and um, I'm just going to talk about how it all came down because you had, had asked me um, if I wanted to contribute to the Victoria Hospitals Foundation. I was like, yes, I'd love to do that. And so um, I ended up contributing a personal branding um, photo shoot and it went into the silent auction for the foundation and you happened to win it <laughs> which was pretty amazing and i was i was hoping you would too because i really wanted to work with you just as much as you wanted to work with me um so i'm just curious as you know why would why were you interested in working with me in the first place <laughs> well first of all i'll tell you it was a really great pleasure to work with you because um i felt i really liked the process and um, really the process is more important than the product. And the, the process was to examine what I wanted out of it, um, rather than you, me just showing up with a bunch of clothes and you saying pose like this or this or this. Mm -hmm. And you went through the interview and I felt you're very detail oriented. Yeah. And um, you're high blueprint. Very high blueprint. Oh, okay. <laughs> blueprint nurturer. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but you're, uh, you know, you're interested in getting it right. And I really liked, I looked at your website and I liked the um, images that you had for other people. And I felt that they really mm -hmm. reflected who they were as people. Mm -hmm. And I've received similar compliments on my photos that they really do look like me as a person. 
mm -hmm. um, which is a high compliment because I've looked at other ones where, you know, uh, I'm like, is one time somebody airbrushed me so I had no lines and I thought, if somebody meets me in person, they're going to wonder what the hell? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want people to not recognize you <laughs> when they see you in person. Well, that's very, um, very kind of you and, and um, for pointing that out and um, sort of, uh, what do you call it, solidifies the way I do things so I can keep doing it that way. <laughs> um, and I should say, it's not yeah. just you, right? It's you and you at a team. And my team, yes. We all work together um, to create, you know, that's the whole point and to you know bring out the best in my clients like yourself yeah <laughs> so that you can keep doing what you're doing and attract the people that you need to attract in your life and your business and um, keep contributing <laughs> i will say, i will say though it's kind of funny because when linda was doing the um photos i wanted this one photo that you were kind of like eh, whatever and i got the one with my feet up in the air yes <laughs> Well, yeah, I threw it in. I was like, I know she's going to want this one. so. I but I got so much feedback out of that <laughs> yeah. one photo because yeah. it just shows, you know, my kind of irreverent fun side. Exactly. And your love of shoes, I was <laughs> going to say. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm very glad. And that's what I try to impart to clients as well. It's not because um, often people say, oh, it's the photographer's job to make me look good. No, it's our job as a team to collaborate because I don't know everything about you. Um, you know, and my, my makeup artist doesn't know everything about you. And so it's, it's the, the, the subject has to admit and do as much work as a photographer in some ways, right? Yeah. So it's a collaboration um, and it's an energy exchange. So that's what I try to explain to people, you know, who say, well, it's you, you're going to make me look good, aren't you? Well, no, you're going to make yourself look good because it comes from inside. Well, I also noticed that you mm -hmm. were sweating. I was sweating. I was working hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy, yeah. And it's not easy for the subject either, especially most of my clients aren't used to having their photos taken. So it is a bit intimidating. It can be. But I try to, you know, do my best to make it as fun and comfortable as possible. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for the most part, it is. You know? I would say, yeah. like, if you're going to show the images that, mm -hmm. if anything, I look really relaxed. Yeah. And maybe she just wore me out. From uh, <laughs> keep going, Jane. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely be showing some of the images we do, or uh, we did. And um, so, I guess I mean we talked a little bit about you, your, you, what you liked about the experience um, and the collaboration. So, how are the photos working for you? I know you said you've had some good comments. How has it impacted your business or your life in general? Maybe they're really great. So what I've done is created a story around each photo and just talked about uh, the ones, the one in the yellow sweater where I'm holding the coffee cup is about listening to people. Mm -hmm. um, people have said that, it, that uh, they look very authentic and um, natural. Uh, the one with the yellow sweater where I'm facing the camera is uh, being used as a picture for a tour company where I'm hosting a travel uh, excursion for Departures Travel mm, next that fall. Exciting. <laughs> and then also being different. Um, so the one with the shoes talks about how we have a different approach to real estate and it's fun. And then there's the mm -hmm. one with the Tesla yeah. <laughs> and the red shoes. Yes. And that one is, um, that one talks about just being a uh, high level of service and and um, professionalism so it's like they each have a different angle and mm -hmm. i was able to create a story behind them which really helped me i think sort of solidify where i stand so they're the brand is not just the picture the brand is the uh sort of the layers behind mm -hmm. the scenes right the story and the personality so people can get and that's what i um you know a lot of people have a misconception about personal branding photography, it's, it's really about um, creating a story and letting people into who you are as a person, who you are as a business person, the what, where, why, and how of you as a realtor and as a person in the community. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important to understand um, that, you know, it's not just a headshot um, because a headshot to me just shows what you look like. Um, personal branding or branding photography or ed this is like personality driven portraiture really 
shows more of who you are. And I think I'm really, I like really, I like how you just described how you are using your photos strategically and that's how we try to photograph you as well strategically so we know kind of okay well these photos are going to be here these photos are going to be there and why why are you taking these pictures and I think we were really good at collaborating on that together because you had a clear idea I think more so after we you know went through the process yeah. and everything and um, you know well, so, you know, in the yeah. sales training, it's interesting because you want to, when you, whenever you write your content, you want to appeal to different groups. So some of those pictures will appeal to nurturers. And I realize the nurturing side really right. came out in those photos. Yeah. But there's also the, the action kind of high level performance people who mm -hmm. want to work with somebody who's successful. Mm -hmm. And then the, the knowledge one where I have the pen. And mm -hmm. then um, the blueprint one also with the with the pen and the computer. So just sort of highlighting different aspects of my personality as well as servicing the needs of the client. Mm -hmm. Now, have you noticed a difference? I know it's hard to tell because it's an indirect impact in your business, but do you feel like you've had a, a, a level of attraction now because of the photos? Or do you feel, what, do you, what, do you, what would you say the tangible results are from actually marketing, using your, these photos in your marketing? Uh, I don't think I can measure it specifically because I haven't tried to, but mm -hmm. uh, we definitely use it in our media um, the way I ex expressed. I think that uh, what it's done is kind of elevated my the perception of people in the public eye mm -hmm. and how I know that's working is because I'll be somewhere and somebody will say, are you Jane Johnston? And I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I exactly. saw your picture. <laughs> yeah. Or something like that. Right. They, um, yeah. And I think also, honestly, my assistant loves them because I'm able to use more than just one headshot. Previously yeah. I've just used one headshot all the time. Yeah. So I can adapt the headshot for different situations. Exactly, so, yeah. yeah. yeah, And that's another thing that sets branding photography apart is that um, you have the versatility of using different photos for different things. And, um, you know, it's an insidious thing, right? Um, because it actually does raise the perception and elevates you as the expert. So it's kind of happening authentically for you 24-7. And that's one of the things I say is, you know, um, this photography or your portraits, your branding portraits should speak for you when you can't be there in person. It sounds like they are. Yeah. Um, so Jane Johnson, thank you so much for being here. Jane, again, is a realtor with Briar Hill Group Remax Camosun here in Victoria. She's an award-winning uh, realtor. She's a mother of two. She has her vlog. Um, which is amazing, called Vancouver Island Time. She's a rower and she's a speed skater and she's a mentor and she's an uplifter in, in our community. So thank you so much for being here and I look forward to having you on the show again, maybe in the future sure. or maybe doing some more photos or, you know, seeing at, you at the next <laughs> events. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's been a pleasure. I think this is a fabulous opportunity for change makers. And I appreciate it. it takes a lot of time and effort to do this sort of thing. So if you get the opportunity to work with Linda, I would highly recommend that you do so. Thank you so much. So thanks again for joining us at the kitchen table where ideas for change emerge. All it takes is one small thing to make a difference. And people like Jane Johnson make it look easy, but really it isn't. It's just about, like she said, finding your passion, finding what really means something to you and just doing it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Eloquent Entrepreneur Conversations with Everyday Changemakers and that you're feeling supercharged and inspired to make your positive impact in the world. Because one thing I know for sure is that together we can create a lasting legacy and ignite others to do the same. To learn more about the Eloquent Entrepreneur and more, visit my website at lindamackey.ca. Bye for now.